Howdy all, got a bit of a special one for you today. We're gonna to be visiting my hometown back in the UK, all the way from here, the beautiful cottage, out here in rural Buriram. I'd like to take you back down there for a few reasons, mainly because on this channel I get criticized a lot for criticizing the UK. And I often think that maybe I'm not talking about the same UK that other people are talking about, or maybe it's just that I don't remember. Some people comment that I've lived out in the boonies in rural Thailand for far too long, and that has caused me to suffer from some kind of mental illness that makes me reflect on the UK as if it's not in a great state at the moment. So rather than just talk from our sunny homemade paradise here, I'd like to take you to my hometown and then I can show you firsthand what it is that I'm talking about in a lot of these videos and what it is a lot of people that comment on this channel are referring to when they call the UK a fallen country. A place that they're trying to escape, many of them, whether it be in retirement or they're coming over to Asia. These are the people that usually watch this channel. I guess some people would look to this channel of how would you move from the UK to Thailand or even Asia and get an idea whether it's how much money you're going to need to do that what you're going to do when you get here and things like that so so admittedly my audience is is quite biased there's a lot of people out there that love the UK there's also a lot of areas of the UK that are splendid and, and very nice they're not the areas I'm gonna be talking about today I'm from the north of the UK in a place called Bolton and that's the area that I want to show you today but rather than waste my valuable funds on what I consider to be the antithesis of a holiday my friend David from the wandering turnip is going to show us the Bolton area and save me the hassle of flying all the way back to the UK. David is a fantastic YouTuber that covers the deterioration of the UK. He goes to many cities all over the UK and he's really on the ground covering this story and has kindly agreed to show us my hometown in this video. Disclaimer, as I always say on this channel, these could be the ramblings of a madman and the comments from crazy people that don't know shit about shit. That's for you to decide. These are my opinions, these are not facts. I'm not in any way qualified to talk about these particular topics, but on this channel, these are the kind of things that I like to talk about, so don't forget to hit subscribe. And this is about the time that I would take you out on the old Salang, to so somewhere in the village to complete this vlog. But over Songkran, the Salang had a little bit too much fun and now it's got a burst tire, so I cannot jump on it yet until it's fixed in order to go to the next location. So because those that have watched this channel for a long time have seen so much of the farm and know the ins and outs, I think I'll drive to the next location and we can talk from there. But first over to David, AKA the wandering turnip, who's gonna tell you a little bit about Bolton and show you around my hometown. So Bolton is a town. It's not a city, it's a town. It's one of the biggest towns in the United Kingdom. And that growth came from the industrial revolution. Yeah, there's literally nothing open in this arcade bit, but a lot of pawnbrokers. Another pawnbroker's there. Yeah, it's never great when the main stuff is pawnbrokers, bookies on your high street. Yeah, and then on this bit here, we got one shut down there. Node, there's one there. <laughs> Another one here as well. Another bookies there. Wilkinson's is closing down. Another bookies here in a big old building. Another one here. Another boarded up one there. Massive summit boarded up there. Don't know what that is. So Bolton as well is an example of the the leveling up pantomime that's going on. So it did receive, I think it was about 20 million from the first round of leveling up, which was for the market, which I'll go explore. It was for the museum and the library and some other stuff. And then it had two failed bids. The government refused two bids. That was for about 40 million. They didn't get those. But then another one, and this is just hilarious. Well, it's not, it's pretty sad, but it just goes to show why high streets can end up looking like they do. But yeah, there was another bid, and I think it was for about 16, 17 million, and they didn't get that, not because it was refused, but because, and the council admitted this, there was an email mishap. And it turned out that what they'd actually done was, they just missed the deadline. They just hadn't got everything sorted by the deadline. So they missed out on being able to get the funding. 
and you wonder why the high streets look like they do. 16 million missed out on because you forgot to send an email on time. Councils. Now comparing a more rural town in Bolton with a rural town here in Thailand, in Buram, it's not really comparing apples with apples, like I admit that. However, one thing you will notice in Thailand is that every space is used. There are very few derelict buildings that are boarded up and shuttered up and the Thais use these locations even as restaurants, shops, or even turn them into accommodation. Every space is used and a lot of the businesses are not big companies. They're local people that are selling their produce and making money for themselves and their families. As you can see over here, more of a high street area. Of course, these are more commercial shops and you've got a pharmacy over there, but you can see like 90% of the shops are open and doing business. Now, rather than tell you why this is, because I don't know, there's a multivariate reasoning behind it, I'm quite sure of that, but I do wonder, is it something to do with the rents, the extortionate rents in these more urban areas like Bolton, which is very, very close to Manchester? Are the high streets dying across the UK? Is the whole place crumbling all over the country? I'm a little bit biased because I'm talking really about my hometown in Bolton. Or is it mismanagement of funds by the council that seem to have millions and millions and millions of pounds collected in taxpayers' money that don't seem to know how to allocate it very well? So is it mismanagement of council funds? Is it just the stupidity of the UK government? Did we indeed bring this whole problem on ourselves by creating a nanny state where actually some people are better off not working and able to pay their rents and extortionate council taxes by receiving money from the UK government. Why would you go to work for many hours of the day if you can just claim benefits? Or could it be that those millions of pounds, instead of being focused on making the UK a better place and improving the quality of life for the people that live there, are instead spent on bombs in order to bomb other countries and incinerate brown children. But I'm sure all these hypotheses are deserving of some consideration. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to be disingenuous about Thailand. Thailand has its problems. There is a Yaba problem here, a drug problem, as there is in many areas of the UK and the USA. It has its fair share of bad points. However, in general, Thai people, even some of the poorest people that I've met in this country over the years, genuinely come across as very happy. They're able to do business here quite easy, setting up their own small enterprises that don't have the government's hands in. Rents are cheap, particularly in this area, so there is no huge property inflation, which makes it difficult for people to do business. And I have just come across an area that is pretty bad. A big corner boarded up thing here. This probably would have been a pub or a bar. Yeah, you got your posters on the wall, probably for something. Whoa, shit. Then across the way there, something shut. 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 So yeah, you got that entire row there, all closed. And then coming here, closed. Look at all these closed. Across the way as well. Closed. Boarded up. Shut. Another massive one there, shut. So that there, boarded up, but it says it's going to be turned into brand new luxury apartments. A one bed from 175,000 to 285,000 for a one bed. Great, affordable housing for us all. In fact, this entire row really, everything's boarded up that one there as well. So the average salary in Bolton is £28,000 a year, which is lower, quite a bit lower than the national average, which is £36,000. So that obviously plays into the economy as well. And what happens? Another 
shut down thing here. M&S, this store is now closed. Thank you to all our Bolton colleagues and customers. So this place is called Crompton Place. Right. Empty unit there, empty unit there. Another one there, closed. That's so weird in there. Literally the majority of the units left empty. Sign latte yen cup. Lot shot chai cup. One nine. Oh, come on. Chai Taiwan song. One nine. Chai cup. Welcome, my cup. So the cafe is a little bit busier than it usually is, so don't mind if I rant a little bit quieter in respect of those around me. I think the main motivation for doing a video like this is really about the comments that I receive. If I say anything negative about the UK, or I suggest maybe the UK has a little bit of a problem, as you've seen on this vlog, I'm basically told to just be quiet and shut up and don't talk about it. But I think a lot of people think the same as me. Like, it's not been nice to see a country fall to pieces. I, I still have family that live there and have to deal with a lot of the stuff that goes on there. A lot of my subscribers here look to this channel for what they might do for their retirement, how they may retire in Thailand one day, not, not Thailand, but maybe even Asia, how some are going to Mexico, going to leave the country and start a new life in a place where maybe they feel more comfortable. Many want to spend their retirement in the sun, not the drizzling wet rain of the UK. Many people have had enough of the policies in the UK, of the way the UK is run, the way it's governed, the constant promises of change and nothing ever really happening. The abject poverty, of course, the, the poverty rates in the UK are double that of a place like Thailand, for example. The homelessness is much, much higher in the UK. A lot of people in the UK and the USA and Australia and places like that are recognizing that the home country is good for some. If you're um, particularly wealthy and you live in a nice area, um, that has not changed in many years. The community has not um, morphed and changed. So it's a broken community, a lack of community. It's not impoverished. If you're in areas like that, you're going to enjoy the UK. And they're the people that are commenting on the video saying, you're completely wrong about the UK. It's a wonderful place to live. You know, I live in West London and it's very, very nice. And of course it is, but that's not North UK. And that's not a lot of the, the towns and the cities in the UK that are, are fine to to pieces you know i think people have a very old idea of what the uk is in their head but they're not they're failing to actually look around and see the reality of the uk those that have had enough are looking to get out start a new life somewhere else and they're looking to channels like this to say well how how is it in rural thailand which is kind of what i cover other channels cover the cities other channels are covering Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Mexico, Colombia. There's, there's so many cho choices now. And this is pure opinion, but I think that if things don't change radically in the West, there'll be mass migration of the indigenous population to other countries where maybe the quality of life is better. It's not just that you don't just move to Asia or Thailand because it's cheaper. I see a lot of vloggers, they say, oh yeah, it's cheap, it's, it's cheap, come on over, it's cheaper. Um, that may be like one reason for somebody to come and move to a country like Thailand. Like, I think it's a reason that is fading rapidly. Although the cost of living is an important factor in why people move to these different countries, maybe they get more bang for the buck. And a lot of that I think is actually because they're not paying as much out on rents. Like one thing that is particularly cheaper in a lot of these countries in comparison to the UK is the price to rent and things like having council tax and stuff like that. If you want to buy, it's a little bit more difficult, but to rent, I think that's one, one big difference where things are cheaper. And, but it's not just cost of living. Cost of living is one part. We've got to think about quality of life. I find that people are just genuinely happy here. There are places in the UK that I've lived and, and went where people are really friendly, great communities, particularly in Wales, um, I found that. But also in, in Thailand, there are, people are happy. It's a warm, happy environment to, to live. 
So it's about the quality of life. It's questionable that my hometown now, would my quality of life been better if I'd stayed there? I can guarantee for me personally, not. Not for everybody, but for me personally, not. And this is an invitation for everybody to just, oh, come to move to Thailand, it'll solve all your problems. I'm just talking about that if you don't like a place and you, you can't tolerate it anymore, and you can't change it, which is key, because people are trying to change it. They're trying, I mean, people have taken it upon themselves now to organize food banks in the UK. People have taken it upon themselves because the government is too busy spending the money on nonsense and useless things and lining their own pockets. The community have had to step in and organize food banks and charities to help the homeless population and the people that can't afford to eat in the UK. We could go on and on and on about that, but if change isn't possible, and you don't like where you are, then it's time to explore moving to a different country. But there is a lot of places you can move, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and I think the biggest impediment for a lot of people is I don't have enough money to do that. It doesn't require a lot of money, especially if you go into a place where you can do certain jobs, where you can work certain jobs. Thailand is highly restrictive. It doesn't just allow you to come in and work a job here, as I've said. It's a policy of Thailand that I like. I think is a good policy. I think it's a policy that a lot of countries should have to at least prioritize their citizens first. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to own a house here without going through a company structure or putting in a Thai wife's name, things like that. These are small sacrifices that I see, especially having children here. Um, these are small sacrifices that I see of living here. But some jobs are available to do in Thailand here. Like I've worked in hospitality. I worked in the five-star hotel industry. There is teaching. I've also been a teacher here. A lot of expats and farangs, they've started their own businesses. Uh, some are even with Thai family and doing farming and things like that. Coffee. 60 baht. So please tell me the price in the UK or the USA. How much you pay for like an iced coffee, something like that. I always like to do these price comparisons during the vlog. And some people might say, oh, you've got some balls to say this on camera, this kind of stuff about the UK. How dare you insult a whole, a whole country, you know? But really what I found is even those that still live in the UK, many of them agree with me. Not necessarily my comparisons with Thailand, but with the state of the UK. It's almost like one thing is projected in the media, one thing is projected to certain uh, affluent, wealthier people from the UK. Like it's a lot of the wealthier Londoners that will comment and object to what I'm saying. Um, in, in their minds, the UK looks one way, but to the common man in the UK, it is a corrupt and fallen country. But as ever, I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please do leave me a comment on what you think about this topic and if you've seen the UK change at all and do you think it's a fallen country and what are your thoughts on Thailand also? Like, I'm not averse to criticism on this vlog. My opinions are always open to, are always subject to change. And now I just want to cover a few of your guys' comments from previous videos and maybe highlight a little bit more of what the hell I'm talking about here. So we're going to start with a comment from Gary Poole. Gary says, I left the north of England 21 years ago, emigrated to Australia. I've watched the UK get worse and worse, the crime rate much worse, asylum seekers, lack of jobs, as well as lack of work opportunities. Though Australia isn't perfect and expensive, it is much safer, it's a much safer country with low employ unemployment. The hospitals here and medical care is excellent and you don't have to wait long. I get private health insurance so things get done fast, it's much safer. I never felt the need to watch my back at night and do detours. Then you got the climate. I used to suffer in the UK with mis the miserable weather, especially the winter, so I feel happier here with blue skies. Also been a long time visitor to Thailand and the rest of Asia. Bali's only three hours, Bangkok seven hours, and I get direct flights to most Asian capitals. So, so I guess that's an example of somebody that successfully emigrated and became an immigrant over in Australia now. Maverick AKL1824 says, I don't understand why you call yourself an expat and not a migrant worker. An example of a, a nurse from England working in New Zealand is an expat, but a nurse in the Philippines is the same position and salary is called a migrant, migrant worker. Now the reason I don't use the word immigrant is because the Thai government stamp in our passport the words non-immigrant. They remind us at every opportunity that we're not immigrants here. And so often I'll use the word uh, expat, but you did say migrant. Am I a migrant? Yes, 
a migrant. Sometimes I will refer to myself as an immigrant, but I think that expat fits the best definition. I don't have a problem with the word. It seems some people do have a problem with the word. Uh, And I did a video on this where I go into detail of why I don't have a problem with the word. That's also linked below. Link in description and pinned comment. Olivia Holiday says, your points on the UK are bob on. That's a very UK phrase. I left eight years ago and wouldn't go back in a box terrible place to to live and to raise kids i had a conversation with my dad the other day and i said i'm really thankful that otis and hugo my sons are not being raised in the uk um number one just the quality of life the weather the hustle and the bustle of the whole thing but the main thing for me is that on the farm they have vast open spaces of of land it's comfortable it's um they actually own land now my son is only six and so in the uk it would not be possible for him to get on a property ladder it'd be quite difficult now he also he already owns land so one with a house built on one with a rice field that's something we wouldn't have been able to do in the uk with the cost of, of land and i think that what's happening with BlackRock buying up all of the land and big companies buying up all the land in places like the UK and the USA. Eventually, I think that's going to come to time. And I know if something happens to me, they've always got a place to live. So not only that, their school is very good as well. So they have a, a good school with good teachers and just the pleasant atmosphere, the upbringing. If you watch my main channel, you can see how my family are very happy here. Let's just say that. Paul Fisher says the UK is totally fooked. You can't, you can't do anything here without it costing you money. Nothing for the kids to do, no shops, NHS useless, weather is crap, eight months of the year and the crime is through the roof. So I think that's probably a pretty good synopsis of the way the UK is at the moment. Good shit, 6125 says, man, the world is changing before our eyes. People leaving countries like America and the UK is eye-opening. We always see people wanting to go to those places, but not so much. I think a lot of the economic migrants have an idea in the head that it's such a dream to go to these places, but when they get there, they get hit with the stark reality that probably some areas of the USA and the UK are more impoverished than where they came from, and that their opportunities are even less than what they came from and they're in legal trouble and things like that so when an immigrant comes into the UK or the USA and settles down there and makes a life for themselves they also don't want infinite amounts of people coming in or at least they want it to be controlled and capped it's just common sense stuff just like Thailand look after Thai people first the indigenous population first that's a common sense approach one that I don't know if it's purposely been done in the West Like if it's part of like an an agenda, are the governments purposely trying to destroy the country? Because sometimes that's what it seems like, you know. So I can't really cover any more of your comments because this vlog's gone on way too long already. But thanks for joining me on this vlog. Do let me know your opinions, your outrage, your um, agreements, your disagreements in the comments. Thanks for subscribing, liking, and another big thank you to the wandering turnip, David, for uh, taking us to Bolton there. Don't forget to head over to, to his channel and subscribe. Take care, guys.